Hi, how's it? Hi, 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 hi. How's it in the name of Christ? How you doing? It's your girl, Queen K. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're Stella and I hope you're in a neat little bunch. What's up? It's the 27th of March, 2024. And uh, this video is not going to be long. Um, I'm just here to give a daily update as I usually do. I feel as if though I need to even keep it light and mild. Um, I rocked up here yesterday explaining to you how my body's feeling, even day before, and I'm just on a downward spiral. It's just going downhill. It's, it's like I'm not improving, but I, it'll eventually abate. I trust it to abate ultimately because that's just what God does. But let me just put this out there first. Caveats. Kindly look out for my captions down below. They're not always accurate. Sometimes they use a small g for God. Sometimes they are um, not very... They, they're not reverential. They're not accurate. They are... Um, you get my point. Just a whole bunch of stuff. All right. One day, God willing, I shall correct them. And then... Mm, I'm very potentially wearing app makeup. If I am, you'll know. If I'm not, you'll also know. And then, whoa, I don't even know how I am. Like, yes, and guys, I'm strong. <laughs> nah, I'm not strong. Christ is strong. Thorn in my flesh, like, is that basic? Anyway, yeah. Um, I did mention that I'm very potentially wearing app makeup. That too. Oh, yeah, well, exactly, exactly what's currently happening right now. Like, yeah, this whole thing of pinching my cheeks. I'm only human after all. I'm only human after all. I'm only human after all. Don't take a jab at me. If you prick me, I bleed. It, it's uh, exactly mm, this whole situation. That is especially important today. I bet you can tell that it's before I've taken a shower because I still have all that white car sunscreen on my forehead. Anyway, whatever. Irrelevant information that. But information nonetheless that I pro uh, provide because I can. Anyway, uh, yeah, guys, whew, I don't intend to be long here. Just long enough, in all frankness. Uh, downward spiral, like I said, it's just getting worse. Like, the situation is, is dire. The situation is dire. Uh, yo, wait a second, people in the kingdom of darkness. Alright, so yesterday, I was feeling like the scum of the earth like trash. Well, today's worse, but I still de delivered work. I still did what I needed to do. Uh, and I will continue to do stuff like that. Like, yeah, I've been working, basically lying down, getting up, lying down, getting up, lying down, getting up. It's been rough and I've got this like ridiculous headache. There's a lot going away no matter what I do. Like, no matter how much grandpa I take, it's just there. I should have probably showered first. I don't know, like this white car sunscreen is really kind of disturbing my peace, but it is what it is. We deal, okay? We deal. Uh, my hair is also kind of messy. And that makes me uneasy. But I don't have energy to do anything. Why Why are these so big? I don't really have energy to do anything. So my hair's the least of my concerns right now. Why are my captions so gargantuan? Like they're so huge. Like what, CapCut just made a decision that no, we like them really big. Make them super big. Make them crazy big. And the human being in question won't mind. Not true. I, I, I prefer them decently sized. Not looking like they're taking up the whole screen. Anyway, yeah, y'all, guys, a desperado, desperado, desperate actions. These are the actions of desperate men and women, because it's both. These are the deeds of desperate men and women that are trying to prevent a woman that's walking in obvious breakthrough from finishing their breakthrough. Um, it's a breakthrough for a reason. It's called breakthrough for that very purpose. I'm in it, but who? This is why you guys get killed. Yeah, this is why they die, guys. Um, I am sick. Like, yesterday I spoke about an impending nausea, right? Like, I, I spoke about how it is that I was feeling nauseous too, like vomiting. Well, now it's mixed with a headache too. Like, yeah. It's just, it's death spells mixed with capitulate, sit around, do nothing. And I'm like, hey, hey. Yeah, if I sit around and do nothing, that's when I start to die. So counterproductive. However, uh, I am looking at Jesus and nowhere or at nothing else. At nothing and no one else. And, and I'm grateful for that because whew, you guys, like, <laughs> like, you know, just imagine if there was no God. And all there was was the devil. I like to say that. I like to make that uh, proclamation, that statement. Especially when I'm going through a lot of spiritual attack. I like to say, imagine if there there is no God. Like this situation that I'm in right now. Like like the past couple of days I've been coming here after, after showering. Uh, so by then I've already sort of kind of washed off the, the sunscreen from during the day. Uh, but now like I can see, like it's just so white casty. But it's okay, that's not the main important thing here. I like to say, 
Imagine a world with no God. Yeah. Yes, like it, but who? Like you discover that the devil is real. You discover that witchcraft is a thing, that it works. <laughs> yes, yeah, like it. And then if you wish the whole planet and expect that there is no body, putting a restrainer on this. <laughs> oh, good. I have no energy. Like, I have absolutely no energy. You you trust that there is nobody putting a restraint despite no energy. I'm working because you know Gagara, That's what's good. Um, you trust that there there is nobody uh, putting a restrainer on on this 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 situation that I am in right now. The and this is no longer. It's not just brain fog. It's not just um like a, a fuzziness. You know, it, this is a death spell operating mixed with a whole bunch of other stuff it's a lot of sorcery okay all in one sitting uh and i'm i'm a christian so i'm going to get out of this i'm gonna conquer i had a, a dream last night i woke up to remember a red candle uh the guy in america used to use a, a yellow one there was some yellow candle that he was burning for a death spell last night however i dreamt about um a yellow one no a, a red candle at the end of itself like yeah apparently with those candles at the end of the burning of the candle the person has to be dead and i dreamt about the candle at the like it was basically the wick was finished the wick the wick right it's a wick the wick was finished and all that was left was the very bottom the wax at the very bottom with it without that doesn't have wick in it it was just the the candle had melted all the way to the bottom and the wick was gone <laughs> and it was just sitting there that candle was just sitting there finished off finished like burning and yeah I, I had a dream of me seeing just that candle finished off and it was red in color <laughs> yeah that was God showing me one of their little dead spells have officially been proven failed because their candle is done burning and you're still breathing but they're not done they're gonna keep going back to the drawing board because I told you all the way up until you are officially set free they're gonna keep trying and trying and trying because all these years their spells ha appear to have been working and uh, they're gonna therefore lean on their old uh, successes until they get finished off uh, and then I was like to the Lord uh, so what am I gonna just keep feeling like this until I'm like out of my mother's house until I have my apartment until I finally meet my man and he proposes marriage and God was like I told you Garabo, these people are gonna die they are going to pass away because over i guess my dead body right for me to let my child walk it through these streets like this the stuff that you guys endure people through this is why you have to die like um imagine if there was no god like when you are so desperate to keep your victim hostage uh, that that you are prepared to let a woman walk through life physically sick without being sick trying to vomit without there being vomit trying like having a headache 24 hours a day no medication is working no grandpa nothing you think you can make a person live like that this is the kind of stuff that kills people mysteriously that don't know jesus like Prisha similani was a celebrity in this country and she died a mysterious death where she was sick and she kept on going to doctors and nothing was working she even consulted la masangoma nothing was working ultimately she passed away with her looking like like according to western medicine she was healthy there was nothing wrong with her they couldn't find a single thing wrong with her and she died anyway she was just withering away in bed from what was obviously black magic it was obviously a death spell somebody killed precious that's just the thing stuff like that kills unbelievers it kills people that don't know god people that keep on knocking on doors of disangoma this is the kind of stuff what, what i'm going through right now is the kind of stuff that killed precious similani where it is that nothing works western medicine doesn't work taking a grandpa for a headache does not cure it drinking a whole bunch of water eating very uh hearty food eating very energy filled food carbohydrates gives you no energy feeling like you've got narcolepsy eh? constantly sleeping all day long this is the kind of stuff that kills people mysteriously like witchcraft y'all are creeps like i can't say this enough you get involved in this stuff you're psychopaths you are these like sociopaths these murderers and murderesses and then you have the also brazen brazen audacity once people have died to attend their funerals you also have the brazen audacity to go to their funerals because they tend to be your friends your family members etc acquaintances colleagues so you go to their funerals having done this to them where the poor guy or the poor girl passed away mysteriously and they kept on in the run-up to their death um they, they consulted like a million doctors. They went to all different kinds of doctors. They went to specialists. They went to get scans, brain scans, oncologists, pathologists. They just went everywhere, okay? 
and like literally nothing gave nothing gave and then some of them just like with precious end up getting to a point where they're like okay maybe this is spiritual somebody umloile and so they go to the sangoma <laughs> yeah fighting fire with fire kingdom divider cannot stand ain't gonna do jack for you they then go to the sangoma and the solution is just so simple it's so 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 simple christ just stick around with jesus and that which nearly ends you just doesn't if this thing can do this to a christian who is blood-bought fiery for jesus uh, standing in the gap for herself and for other christians and for other people that aren't in christ if this can afflict somebody that cannot just get knocked out by these serpents and these scorpions and all these powers of the enemy uh what are you what in the world do you think a spell like this does to an unbeliever i'm gonna get out of this i've been getting out of stuff for years I've been getting out of random weird funny like hard knock extreme occult magic for years like uh, spells that lay me low-key waste or low-key destitute low-key flattened on the ground creamed yeah i've been getting out of them for years like after a couple of days progresses and then i'm boo a breakthrough next thing it's like nothing ever happened but uh as a christian uh, I, I, I used to expect that what would happen is for me to not get affected by it at all. But I guess the Lord allows us to have a thorn in our flesh for it to affect us to a certain extent that we might be able to empathize with unbelievers. That we might be able to empathize with the unbeliever that does not get cured from this. Because this ends the life of an unbeliever. A person that does not have the Holy Spirit cannot conquer this. It is impossible. So as a Christian, I have to go through it in order that I might describe to you just exactly what Precious went through. Just so you can understand exactly what it is that people who pass away mysteriously in their sleep, mysteriously from illnesses that cannot be accounted for, that doctors cannot diagnose, that look, that like blood work comes back perfect, normal. And then the, and yet despite it all, the family is up in arms. They don't know what to do. Up and down, up and down. Walk in these streets trying to find help because they can see that Lumdwana uya uyakula. My son is sick, my daughter is sick, my husband is sick, I don't know what's wrong. Doctors say there's nothing wrong with him. And in black culture, usually they tend to know. In black culture, they tend people tend to know that this is black magic. That is attached to witchcraft. And so mind you, when, when you keep on co consulting all different kinds of sangomas archer in these streets to try and find a solution, uh, uh, like helplessly aware that inevitably Umiyenwaku is going to pass away. That inevitably your daughter's going to die inevitably like you get my point can you imagine the the feeling of despair the helplessness that as a mom dealing with a 16 year old girl that's obviously been black magic and you know like can you imagine the helplessness of that woman can you imagine it we are and all she keeps doing is consulting more and more sangomas does not know whether she's coming or going and then after consulting sangomas she then goes and prays to jesus christ and is like jesus please help us ever to a kingdom divided cannot stand you can't serve both god and um I'm a sangoma. I, I did a video uh, some time ago. I can't quite confirm to you how long. Maybe like a month, guess, whatever. Where I was speaking about how it is that these people that are tossed to and from by every wind of doctrine that keep on praying to every god in these streets. Yeah, you you can't expect to get answered prayer because then on that day you mock God. God has a thing about His glory. He has a thing about His fame. He has a thing about um basically a uh, being awarded. Uh, ish, I can't stand being eavesdropped on as well. Anyway, whatever. God has a thing about uh being awarded glory he has a thing about essentially people coming back and saying it was jesus all right yeah it's being very very clear so when you are busy praying to 10 gods for a solution to something that is plaguing you in your life and among those gods is jesus you can absolutely dream on about getting answered prayer on that day it's like similar to i don't know if you guys have seen the movie the mummy one of the mummy movies there is this dude over there that is confronted by this very a deathly scary looking emotive impending him and he is uh, freaking out and so he takes out uh, uh, a jewish star of david and pray no first he takes out a christian cross and prays in the name of jesus and then he takes out a crescent moon of islam and prays in the name of allah and then he takes out a buddha little figurine figurine and he prays in the name of buddha he prays in all different kinds of gods and ultimately he takes out the star of david and then he prays in hebrew uh basically you know the jewish religion and ultimately Imhotep stops and responds and says oh you speak the language of the slaves i could i could use you and then he ends up basically being the devil's sidekick or whatever that guy uh every single time the lord shows me the insincerity of people who come to him when they're desperate for answered prayer but they're going everywhere else he describes he uses that guy to describe to me just the nature of those human beings they are like ones who are among a myriad of other little paraphernalia religious paraphernalia pulling out a christian cross whipping it out as it's dangling maybe even on their chest and saying jesus please help me jesus please help me according to god's word in the book of james 
You should not anticipate that you're going to get anything when you pray like that because you're unstable in all of your ways. A person that prays a prayer unsure or not even certain if it's going to be answered because they don't even trust in the God that they're praying to. You're not going to get answered prayer. You can dream on your unstable. When you are bringing out a Christian cross shaking because it could be one of the things that could cure your daughter from what looks like a witchcraft spell. But you also yesterday consulted a Sangoma. You are unstable in all your ways. You, you, you must just dream on, forget about it uh, in terms of being delivered from whatever it is that's plaguing you because you are not trusting God and God only. Precious Simelan, Simelan, before she died, they, she was all over the show as well. She was busy with Jesus. Please help me. I don't know what's going on. But at the same time, she consulted Amasangoma and the woman died anyway. She perished anyway with the, from this mysterious illness that was obviously induced by black magic. Why? Because uh, like it is written in the book of James, unstable in all of your ways. Do not expect that you're going to get anything from God in prayer. When you pray a prayer that is insincere because you're just testing, you're experimenting with all different kinds of spiritualities. The Lord loves his glory. He loves his fame. Uh, he loves his... um name he uh elevates his own stature every single time there is answered prayer in the life of a christian and he will show himself absolutely faithful in the worst way uh before men when the individual in question that he has delivered has obviously just been chilling with him only chilling with him only the lord has a thing about showing people flames in the climate of a faithful servant he did that with noah ostentatious display of deliverance just eight of them while the rest of them were destroyed on the earth ostentatious show of deliverance in the case of job and his family they trusted just the one true god and so they were taken out ostentatious show of deliverance with the hebrews in the book of esther ostentatious show of deliverance with the hebrews in egypt ostentatious show of deliverance in the case of david with 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 um you know the saul and the absalom stories ostentatious show of deliverance with hannah there whenever people are holding on to no one but just god when they're holding on to just jesus and not trying testing all different kinds of other nasty trash do you understand what I'm saying? When people, uh, I hate the smoke of the smell of cigarettes. I can't stand it. Yes, like it. When people are, 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 are testing all different kinds of all different kinds of other trash, which is what exactly South Africa is is about. South Africa is is on that tip. It, it, it's got all these different uh, things that it trusts in. People in this country are. Oh, I can't stand the smell of cigarettes. Yes, like it. Yes, I can't. I literally cannot freaking deal. I can't stand it. It's all up in my grill. Anyway, uh, what is this? Um, oh, I, I can't even concentrate. Like it's all up in my nose. I can't even concentrate. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, so in South Africa, there's just all this African spirituality, all this mixing with ancestors and all different kinds of things. And pe black people, especially black people in this country can never just go to jesus alone they can never 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 like i keep doing this because i'm trying to conceal my nose i hate the smell of cigarettes like i hate it with a purple passion anyway whatever yeah um they keep on going to jesus and uh and ancestors like they feel as if though they have to create a contingency for themselves some kind of a plan a side piece plan to make sure that they've covered all of their bases and so they bring out ancestors and then they also bring out a christian cross and test both things a woman out here praying in tongues all night long while fasting. But just earlier in the afternoon, she had consulted a Sangoma in order to cure her daughter from some mystery disease, illness, dream on. Like you can literally dream on because then if you get, if the Lord has mercy on your daughter and cures her from this mystery disease, whatever it might be, yeah, uh, glory is going to be awarded either or. Like this woman is going to think that she covered all of her bases and in covering all of her bases, here it is that there was now prosperity. There is now success. Do you know what I'm saying? And she's therefore going to award glory to both ancestors and Jesus. He will have nothing to do with it. If God be God, serve God. If Baal be God, serve Baal. And so the Lord will only burn the sacrifice of Elijah. Why? Because Elijah has made it clear that I'm coming in the name of the Lord of the universe. I'm coming in the name of the Lord on high. I'm coming in the name of the God of Isaac, J Jacob and Abraham, I am coming in the name of one God. And when you come in the name of such a God, uh, as, uh, when you come in the name of God in such a respect as that, that's when your sacrifice gets burnt. That's when the Lord, very in a very showy, ornate, very ostentatious, very shiny fireworks display way, makes it clear that I am the Lord and no, there is no one like me. I don't nobody move, can nobody compare. Like, is that basic? So when you award honor to just him and him only, that's when he's Aja burning your sacrifice on Mount Carmel. That's when he's going to miraculously deliver your daughter from something that's plaguing her because your next door neighbor is a junkie on the occult. Yeah, 
that's when the Lord is going to suddenly just cure you, break you free from some strange headache that's sitting on your head like the craving yako KFC, yako chicken licking, just uh, bothering you, just like making you walk around like a log. All of a sudden you get loose, you get set free. When you are out just standing on Mount Carmel as Elijah crying to only one God, while a whole bunch of people are out just cutting themselves like the prophets of Baal chanting and grunting over a myriad of other gods. The Lord will let them dance around and dilly-dally and bounce up and down on the spot like a beach ball that's kamikaze because it's also suicidal. He will let them do that for a season while you mock them, while you tease them, while you diss them and say, is your God sleeping? Maybe you need to shout harder and wake him up. Yeah, for a season, he will let them play around and do games. And then one day, he will suddenly, very, very, like just feverishly in an ornate fashion, deliver a Christian uh, so, so swiftly, so suddenly. The person that has been standing with him all this time, appearing to be under the spells of some random uh, seditious monstrosities. No, 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 no. Here in Last Deal, this human individual that is the Christian will suddenly get out, suddenly get out in a way that is obviously God, like clear. It's just, it's overt, it's clear. And you're gonna know that it's God. Why? Because that person has been holding on to no one but. That person has refused to consult a sangoma. This person has refused to burn sage. This person has refused to sprinkle salt around her feet. This person has refused to pray in different funny little uh, mantras belonging to Eastern mysticism. This human being has just been like, I apologize. No, that's not God. I ditch it. I, I absolutely have no regard for it. And during the time of their testing, during the time when it's quiet, during the time when God is allowing the headache to guang 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 because these are the symptoms that you bring into your victims which is you're like proper you you give people strange mysterious illnesses that cannot get cured by western medicine antibiotics don't quite retract the bacteria uh paracetamol you know or other types of analgesics don't quite do away with the pain like people are just out here lingered in an enduring random stupid sickness that they don't understand yeah and the christian is the one that suddenly gets loosed from it while other people perish other people pass away you do this to people you endure them through so much pain in their body they die mysterious deaths they get into car accidents they have funny little ailments that they cannot account for but unfortunately if especially if they're living in south africa they pray to jesus christ out here with shaky fingers shaky hands you know, you know, presenting a cross before Jesus on some, please rescue me. But Gamo, they're also going to the uh, Sanguamas. Yeah, it is that they're going to, uh, what do you call this thing? A acupuncture. And then on the other side, they are just experimenting with um, alternative medicine that is spiritual, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they keep trying all these things, testing them, and God will let them cut themselves like the prophets of Baal, chanting, grunting up and down all night long until they faint. And then one fateful day, and ever so suddenly, speedily, will the Lord then rescue the righteous. Will the Lord then suddenly just burn the sacrifice of Elijah? He tends to wait for the prophets of Baal to exasperate themselves, chanting and grunting around a fire. Yes, now around a sacrifice that's not quite burning. And at the opportune moment, that's when he burns Elijah's sacrifice. So the patience of Elijah is in waiting for the prophets of Baal to faint. And what I'm trying to explain to you guys right now is that some of y'all are about to pass away. You're going to die. You are going to faint. The Lord is waiting for you to ultimately be exasperated from trying to get to a Christian. And in that season, you are just giving a sister a headache. I've been asking God, when is this thing going to abate? When is it going to stop? I'm like my whole body, like I'm sick. Like why am I nauseous? It's not like, you know, like what's going on? Why is eating not giving me energy? What is happening? This is lingering for too long. And I've been talking about this for the past three days. Talking about how it is that I'm in the state. It's, uh, today it's worse. Today it's just horrible. Today, my body, I feel like literally, the, I, I feel as if I'm at a point in this particular th progression of this thing that's afflicting me right now. I feel like I'm where it is that people tend to be just before they actually die from whatever it is that is a mysterious illness. Yeah, I'm there. I'm at a point where it is that it's affecting affecting my body so badly that i can't help but be in bed i work like <laughs> i've been doing the content that i've been producing lying down and getting up lying down and getting up because i'm i'm, I'm in pain i'm no i'm not okay my head my head hurts and like i've got a headache right that's the only pain that i have but in my stomach it's a it's listlessness it's a nausea i, I cannot I, I explain this thing i know what's going on i'm aware that it's a death spell and that's how under heaven it is that they manifest out you're causing people to consult all different kinds of random strange doctors in these streets that are not going to do anything for them but all i need to do is be still and know that he is god i am holding on to no one but jesus christ and because of that unlike precious this is not going to result in my mysterious untimely death
unlike other people who have had loved ones just perish from obviously the observation of black mag magic that's the sad thing about you south africans a lot of times when people die from whatever it is that's, that's hurting me right now you know it's black magic you know you know that you bewitch each other into oblivion you know it's witchcraft you know that somebody somewhere somehow has done something to this person that's perishing and so you feel helpless you feel listless and you are a christian country so you do indeed pray in the name of jesus again you take this sick person to the church but understand when you're busy taking temba and tap on to the church and next thing or you bring uh the, the the pastors to come and pray over temba temple and then after taking uh, bringing the pastors and the deliverance team from your church to pray over temba temple you then also go and consult next door neighbor which doctor because you want to you know double check make sure that your bases are all covered that's when your temba temple is going to pass away anyway the lord will not share his glory is that basic he will not share his glory with anybody if at all the red sea is splitting god is not going to allow for like over his dead body proper and god lives so that can never happen the lord is not about to go and allow splitting of the red sea basically an obvious miracle from him to ever be awarded to any other deity he will not let it be awarded to any other god he will not allow the devil to take even a, a percentage of glory and so where there is confusion as to who brought the miracle about there will be no god pulling through for you that's what you must understand if at all there was any kind of ritual that the hebrews done did right opposite the red sea as they were chanting and grunting that red sea would never have split they had to wait on no one but the god of abraham isaac and jacob they had to wait on no one but that god and so it became clear that that god was the one who split the red sea it became clear that that god was the one that plagued egypt it became clear that the god of joseph in egypt was the only one that was an a that enabled uh joseph to interpret those dreams of the cupbearer and the baker and ultimately of the pharaoh and so glory was awarded to the god of jacob of isaac of abraham of joseph only when it is clear that it is the god of heaven are you to expect receiving a miracle so you're mixing of christianity and all different kinds of things it's costing your children's lives it's costing your husbands your wives lives it is killing your aunties it is killing your grandmothers from mysterious illnesses like the reason why you are appearing to not get any answered prayer black community is because next to bringing isonto longe to tandazela your sick daughter you are also consulting the next door neighbor sangoma the lord will not split that red sea you must get that he will not split it because then once it is split once that kid of yours comes out of it once that fever breaks miraculously and your child rises from the dead like lazarus you're gonna be out here thanking a stupid sangoma right next to jesus he will not share his glory it's what you guys need to understand he will not share his name is perfect it's amazing and he adores it and he will not share clout with anybody else i shall have no other god but me god is not mocked y'all do not be deceived god is not mocked whatsoever a man so with so too shall he reap so all of y'all insisting on mixing all of your random gangstrosity stuff you're proper just like that dude in the mummy what what i just bring out a jew a, 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 a christian cross a crescent moon of islam a buddhist like little figurine i just bring out the star of david you're bringing out everything you are testing your gin to hashem it is no wonder everything just keeps falling apart it is no wonder you just keep losing your in so whatever it is that is messing with my particular life Whatever it is that is making my body as sick that it, as it is right now, to a point where like I can't even take it grandpa anymore. It's gonna give me. It's gonna make. It's gonna end up making me sick because of the fact that I'm taking meds that aren't working and so basically bordering on overdosing. I just have to ride it out. I have to just deal with a lingering headache. I have to deal with a death spell that just needs to break now. I had a dream of a finished off candle. So basically, these occult practitioners are at the end of themselves. They don't know what to do. They keep on burning stuff, they keep on stabbing mirrors, they keep on doing funny strange stuff and nothing is working. Because they're dealing with a Christian that they cannot destroy. And when this Christian then goes and asks Jesus, but then why don't you just not let their spells work? Because I don't like feeling like this, I'm listless, I mean, I'm just dragging my body through life, I can't even exercise. And the Lord is like, because if I did not let you go through this pain, you would not be in a position to empathize and therefore able to explain to unbelievers what it is. That they're facing you would not be able to empathize with them you would not be able to basically have a, the passion to explain a, a a serious problem a serious epidemic of random janes and joes in these streets doing this to people killing people and then attending their funerals and these people don't get arrested for the crimes they commit they they commit murder and then they don't go to jail they commit murder and they don't go to jail they kill family members friends colleagues and they don't go to jail they are psychopaths sociopaths whole entire serial killers that are still living among you 
they're still living among us and their victims pass away mysterious deaths and then they go to the funeral and comfort the mom they go to the funeral and give the mom a 1000 rand stein donation on some mama this is just you know oh, 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 you know to help you along with the funeral expenses kind of good thing you killed her daughter the daughter of which passed away from a mysterious illness that the mom was aware was witchcraft related but the mom's hands were tied because the mom was busy mixing bail with jesus and so her daughter's gone but you you're gonna go and clock into your job your nine to five on monday after having committed murder nobody's actually arresting you i keep saying that witchcraft the fact that it's not regulated is a travesty it's an abomination you do this to people give them feelings of listlessness make them walk around in a fuzzy maze that they don't understand where it's coming from giving them emotions that aren't theirs causing them to commit suicide sometimes you bring physical illnesses on their bodies until they pass away with no doctor being able to diagnose them and the lord has made me feel for a season just what it is that you put people through simply because a person is finally breaking through so simply because a person is finally getting what they've always wanted Umundu, that you are trying to block the like it happened to zahara you animals in south africa finally a person gets what it is that you've blocked all along the woman was 36 when they took out ilobola for her and then next thing she passes away a couple of weeks down the line or a couple of days down the line from the date of her being paid ilobola for when you get to the age of 36 and you finally get married you can sort of kind of tell especially when you're in the black community that somebody actually done blocked your prospects for marriage that's why when at 36 and only now you're getting married and somebody was like i'm sorry over my dead body her family suspected zahara's family Hi guys, how's it going? Chris, you all know that that's what happened zahara's family suspected that there was black magic that was committed against her and that's what killed her eventually that somebody poisoned her that it was omoti they suspected it so finally somebody gets to where they're supposed to get they were supposed to get married at 27 but now they're finally getting where what is it they want at 36 and then you're like i suga no mundona is gonna just keep on surviving me surviving me surviving me and so now you just kill them zahar pray to both jesus christ and my ancestors how you you ain't gonna get it you're not gonna get rescued you're not going to get saved from basically capitulating to spells of irresponsible and reasonable people that don't want other people to live just like Uzahar, mean i got a whole bunch of black folk looking at me on some i blocked your marriage at 25 i blocked it at 26 you have been unemployed all these years now it looks as though you're finally getting your life together just like zahara now she's finally getting ilobola paid for her that's what's good mm. and just at the point where you're obviously breaking through now your youtube channel is growing Carabo, now i gotta die now i gotta die but you see the difference between me and Uzahara is that I've been holding on to no one but Jesus. That is the only difference. Literally no other thing separates me from her because I am thoroughly also passing away. Because I'm finally breaking through. I am being cast death spells on by irresponsible Lay Janes and Jones that are walking these streets of South Africa. Able to clock into jobs with no police dusting any fingerprints for the smoking gun over dead bodies that they have put in the ground. Because it's done through spell casting. People that need to die because you over my dead body before you will get married, Garab. People that need to die because over my dead body before you will start to earn a salary, before you will grow a YouTube channel, Garabo. Like proper feeling entitled to controlling a person's life. And when then you can realize what you to control. Because either way, you child. Either way, she's going to get her career. Either way, she is going to rise again. Either way, she's going to start her business. You then decide that they're going to die. You get to that point. You jealous freaks in the black community. You get to a point where you say, Kwamele Ashon and Goba. Even though I w it was not first, first price for me for Karabo to die, she appears to just be conquering anyway. Utola is in Tozaki. And that, that all proof to you guys, just by the way, that witchcraft has a sell by date, eh? It has an expiration date. It does. You cast a spell on a person thinking it's going to linger for life. And then next thing you to Kimo, you find out Mamu Lobol. So you broke, you blocked something that was supposed to happen to her at 29. She's not 34 and it's happening anyway. So the frustration of the fact that the stuff of yours has an expiration date, the entities can't just latch onto something. That's what makes you finally graduate, graduate to murder. You get to a point now where you're like, I let her die because I did not want to marry it at all. Your witchcraft, you have to keep, you have to manage it in a sticky tape. You have to keep hold it together with sticky tape. You have to keep on coming back to the drawing board. You have to invest and perpetually bewitching Umuntu. And that's why you act, you eventually get to a point of Umuntu. You get to a point of killing a person because you feel as if though, if I can't control her, then let her die. That's you guys. That's your spells. That's what you do to people. And you are walking around free as free men and women, attending ama funerals of people that you murdered. You killed them. When you observe your ex girlfriend Yako happy with uh, uh, her husband, you then go and you cause the husband to pass away. You 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 do a death spell on the husband because oh you don't want to have to watch Moon to constantly uploading things on Instagram. That's the stuff you do to each other, black people. And with this level of witchcraft involved in your community, angazi why? I don't know why you're so busy with sangomas. They are literally ruining your lives. They're not fixing them. They, they, they are ruining your chances of getting answered prayer. They're taking away the hedge of protection that you would have had in Christ. The iron dome around you that you are in dire need of having. 
uh, as a black person living in Africa, you are like Israel, encircled by her enemies. That's who you are. But always, people are constantly trying to heave you away. People are always trying to blo block your own kingdom. Everything. Everything that you can do, they're always trying to block it. Always trying to block it. And unless you are in Jesus Christ and covered by the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Lebalang, you are naked, but naked, encircled by Syria, encircled by Iran, encircled by Lebanon, encircled by, you get my point, all who would try to heave it away will be surely cut into pieces. Why? Because they belong to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You need an iron dome as an African, especially living in Africa. Because Black people don't want to see the success of other black people. It happens inside families. Moms don't want their own daughters to succeed. Sisters don't want their own siblings to succeed. Brothers, cousins. It happens right inside your own backyard. Before you get to the age of 40, because when you are still striving, you are still striving. Witchcraft spells are falling off now. Cell by date has been expired. And so Lomutu is going to come back on some over my dead body in the end of time. When you will go, you are going to die business anyway. Uh -uh. They will tell themselves over their dead body. And indeed, they will tell themselves over their dead body. Their witchcraft has got expiration dates. That's what's going on. You need an iron dome. If and it's you black people, especially you black people in South Africa, you are the ones who are most mixing of Christianity and all different kinds of other things. You are worse off than all of them, all of them combined. You are insistent on holding on to this African spirituality of yours that is sending you to the flames of hell, hitting the ground running. But more than anything, over and above is sending you to the flames of hell. It's causing you to not get answered prayer to the Jesus that you are using as a contingency plan just in case my ancestors sufficiently. You keep on mixing it. You are the ones in the most trouble in all of South Africa because you are the ones that keep on bashing each other in most in all of South Africa. No one in the black community wants anyone to be okay. Manje, why aren't you putting an iron dome around yourselves? Why under heaven when you are like Jerusalem, a very heavy stone for all peoples, a cup of trembling to your own best friend, to your own next door neighbor, your colleagues? When you are the cup of trembling, why are you not covering yourselves with the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Why are you busy getting that are unreliable? Why are you so busy with all of this stuff? A kingdom divided cannot stand. Why are you so busy holding on to a God that does not save? He will not share his glory with any other God. So you are not getting answered prayer. Black chicks, Nina, any chatter at the age of 45. Because Dalaban blocker, I'm a prospect for marriage. And by the time you get married, it's to, it's to some baby daddy of seven. Divorcee of 20. That's what's good. And you're settling. By then you are busy settling. Because even though Nolun Twembu Hampen, every guy in these streets wanted you. I somehow, Njefela, marriage, Yag Iluda, all throughout your early 20s, late 20s, 30s, Zonke Zahamba, until you end up married to Sebotonga and Asosa at the age of 42. That's you, black chicks. When, when you're a cup of staggering like that, why under heaven are you not covering yourself like Jerusalem with the Iron Dome? Why aren't you covering, covering yourself? Why are you busy? Why are you fostering boyfriends that are dating you for 10 years? You don't get to marry you. Lendo lena I shada I chadanga after just one year of knowing you. Why are you still lingering around nine years down the line? Why? You end up compromising e kambazeno with mixing, with all of your fornication, with all of this random weird stuff that you're doing. Minake, I'm holding on to the God of the universe. And who in the world under heaven imagines that they have blocked me? I'm holding on to Jesus and like Job, after losing it all, I will gain it twice over, hundredfold over. I will gain in this world everything that I have lost with persecutions and in the next life I will gain eternal life. That's what God guaranteed me. And two ex-wives, no. I'm going to get a clean slate just as it is that I am a clean slate to some other dude out there. I go cry these scraps. Marona leba tuwang shebileng. The way that bashebileng zahara gatenga cry lo bolaya khach. Eh, on some over my dead body. Because ever since in I was 25, they told themselves that they're going to chart the course of my life. Bazo, bazo decide that I'm going to be like, where I'm going to set foot, mina. Where all those footsteps that I take, they they decide they charted that course for me. Bangi decide there, le kota mina. At the age of 26 and a half, hallelujah, amen. Praise Jesus on high. I gave my life to Him and I've never looked back ever since. And ever since then, black people have been trying to get me to do that which is foolish that they've been doing all this time. They've been trying to get me to acknowledge my ancestors, one, because apparently, allegedly, only reason why impilua mi pichiso kapsunga jena is because mina angtembe my ancestors no ka. Because I'm in Christ and he guaranteed that if anybody wants to live a life in me, they will suffer persecution. But after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace will restore you to everything lacking in nothing. I'm just going through my tests and trials. And after I have gone through my tests and my trials, I will get Yonke into brand spanking new ingati. I just walked, drove into a store above like the whole shop and said, Garabo, pick anything you want, Lana. And you will leave with fresh bags 
of new stuff. Your taller young kid enter. In the day, enter. In that he agas. So he up. He he be so fresh and so new. In that he's just been born yesterday. Umawake has just like literally he's just been weaned off his mother's breasts. The way that this dude is so brand spanking new, I'm gonna ban Tuana. No baggage, no ex wives, is he 20? Nothing of that nature. Just as Lena Kelly fresh and Karaki Tata Hotro Halit, Willing Nam Mewaka, Kotola Monojal. That's how it's gonna happen. Brand spanking new at the age of 40. Watch this space. But I want to buy the Jaluguti Karaba over my dead body, except here in Lazar Deal. Okay, sharp. Fine. Indeed, Vele Vele boy boy. Indeed, Vele Vele girl girl. Over your dead body. You will pass away. It's why you gotta die. You gotta die. Because this is what you do to people. You keep on insisting. Black people with all of this defeatism within your bones. Look, 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 sang on a way. No. Oh, bula la nagapunga jena. Nje. Just because when now you're feeling that he. Oh, muntu ofu nogum control ayo aga control ek. So, kwa mele manja shone. They just need to die now. Oh, muntu akona. Agwa zanga uplo kum from chato. So, what you're gonna do is just end their lives. Uzo mbega six feet under and defella all together. You graduate to homicide because li busy, li bata control about you, but you megalomaniacal creeps. Li kada li fila li fila moto heriki esa folenga grandpa grandpa elenga kara hakana elen bokoto hakana heriki ai fili kirelega grandpa wa because wena upogi le pink wena upogi le rato mo koneng wena upogi le rinei le mo koneng how di ken tabata chome ha ho gake mang tem tembi rabe right so uto nanzo mo le tele tmo rahu ane because you get tired of following her around. You decide to go to Yasin, see on Buluka Lomont, not from Pan, the Rama Vitling Ronam Life and Robert Headstone. Hakada Morbali unveiling because I got any practices the sizing sense in Jeffrey Tatting at Angata, and the Lipizer and the dedicated Chelting at Ogotua Toka fitting when God is no longer concentrating on them, seeing as they've already been judged. Eh, that's you. That's what you do in the black community. Keep our ancestors when we are. Keep your idolatry and all that jazz, Marana. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will make like Elijah and wait on the Lord to burn them the sacrifice at Mount Carmel. And as for me, me and my house, we will get set free from a headache that killed precious Melani. We will get set free from a strange, mysterious illness that killed unbelievers or people that were mixing Jesus with all different kinds of nasty rubbish in these streets. As for me and my house, we are gonna jump up and down celebrating the day the Lord gave us glory and spite. Do you understand? Of all of these uh, blockages, Lime Kakoni all over the show, ning 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 kumbuza u Jezebel. Telling me, Uti, may the gods deal with me ever so severely if by this time tomorrow, Karabo is not dead over my dead body. He didn't even pass away. He was taken away by a chariot of fire, and yet there was a time when some crazy little feverish female was out there intimidating, threatening him with death threats. I must send like the death threats. And the Lipizons are ultra border, ultra border. The woman is the one that passed away with dogs licking her blood. That's what's good. Elijah Yenna, even though at some point he was so scared of this feverish Jezebel that he wanted to die, asking God kill me because Bona, she's busy killing all of your prophets. Elijah ended up not even dying. He got taken away by a chariot of fire. He essentially got raptured. That's what I'm trying to explain to you guys. So all they can do with us is send us death threats as Bazalwan. Death threats. Mara actually finish us off like a Laura, but everybody else by a bota. Indeed, it's written in Psalm 91. A thousand may fall on my side, ten thousand on my right hand, but it will not come near me. Right now, ling pile hedi, gimara yo fola. It's gonna leave. Yo zamai. I might even wake up tomorrow morning feeling right as raining at nothing ever happened. Godwa. All of y'all, they were busy with all this random rubbish in me that are gonna be mowed to the ground like dominoes. Ngoba and funugu to mungun pana yo chata. Kan tuwe na ubata ho pila. Batwa ngbasa pila fo ingi. Imagine a world that is a ghost world that has nobody that's living because you're the only jealous little selfish creep in these streets that wants to have a life that everybody admires. Because that's what you hope to achieve, witches. And if at all there was no God, that's exactly what would happen. It would be a ghost town full of people that have gotten ever that, that have basically moved everyone out of the way that they're competing with. Everyone. Thank God he lives. Because if he did not live, all of your witchcraft would have literally caused an apocalypse of the earth. Lasagna, little blame at the guani, the lawyer to a point of murder. And I listen, you don't even have a conscience anymore, essay. And you cause South Africans to bleed. Over in Dabiaguti, they keep on burying Abantu that they could tell were killed by black magic, but there was nothing they could do about it. Kotonabo, these South Africans live on, they are to blame. Because they are literally holding on to both Jesus and ancestors. And for those reasons, Abantona Bebo Abapo Abafoli. Babasa Babom Meba Pizibans about Patati Millennial Doras and Sans Tabona, because let that way the millennials la lawyer, la loyana. You are killing each other. People you went to high school with, you're neutralizing them, putting them in the ground. And you have no conscience because it's been seared. That's what's good. Your consciences have been seared. So Lebola Banaba to Babam. Bom Meba Tengi Batsabor Banaba Tengi Babula Ilwe, Kiditar, Marabats for the origin of the Tarza Tengi Nitwagai. All they can do is suspect. Eh, Batum. Or suspicion is not gonna cure your daughter from best friend it's not gonna heal your daughter from an ex-boyfriend it's not gonna do yeah jesus only like stop with your ancestral worship ditch your tools your guns that you are loading in satan and trust in jesus only and watch him split your red sea 
watch him recover a person that you know and love that is under a black magic curse watch the lord cure that person because you lean, leaned on him and him only basadi women older women especially goodness gracious seeing as these millennials and gen z's are so lazy for god you do a, a, a wonderful thing to stand in the gap for your families that's what i've been doing for my family because of me that's what's good yeah you do an excellent thing to consecrate yourself to god that the lord might rescue your wayward children who are temporarily insane It'll rescue them for long enough to wake up and smell the coffee and realize that they're lost because right now millennials are busy butchering each other in the cosmos they're killing one another with witchcraft spells in the spirit of competition they are flying on brooms they are astral projecting like no man's business they are busy massacring each other to a point where the population of millennials that are going to enter into old age is dwindling it's tapering down because they're killing each other with witchcraft so i have any or a gen a baby boomer or generation x parent and you listen you're listening to me you trust what i'm saying lean on christ in order that you might not be a parent that buries your own child because right now my own mother is at risk of burying her own child because some millennial freaks that were her former friends some deadbeat ex-boyfriends want her dead that's what's good but thank goodness my mom doesn't have to be godly why because i'm godly i gave my life to christ as a millennial i gave my son my life to jesus christ and so i am covered by an iron dome but the power of a praying woman over a family affects much the effective fervent prayer of a righteous woman avails much or man so if it is not your kids that are godly then you be godly as a parent because these people are literally massacring each other and they have no regard for the consequences of their actions in the future millennials are just dastardly rubbish right now they are so evil that i don't even know who to talk to i feel as if all i can talk to are the gen z's and baby boomers and gen x's because the millennials are just rubbish evil they're evil in a way that is just insurmountable they are the ones that are presently killing me anyway whatever i just had to share my sentiment all of the sickness in my body is because people are thoroughly trying to prevent me from getting to where i need to get a headache that's not going anywhere but trust me i'm going everywhere never mind just anywhere but everywhere because i belong to jesus and upon awarding him and him only glory and fame i will therefore be set free from spells that kill other people a thousand indeed are falling on my left and 10,000 on my right hand but it will not come near me but as for you millennials like shame on you like you are disgusting is that basic i'm signing out in christ's name Cranky. bye